Welcome to the Popcorn Talk Network. For the online broadcast network that features movie discussion, news, and interviews, press one. Popcorn Talk. We talk movies. From the Popcorn Talk Network, the online broadcast network for movie talk, and the schmoes know... This is Marvel Movie News, bringing you the most up-to-date discussion and commentary within the Marvel Universe. Hello, fellow Marvel fans, and welcome to Marvel Movie News on the Popcorn Talk Network, where we break down all the Marvel movie news from all the studios and tell you why you should be as excited as we are. Uh, we're broadcasting to you live from the Danger Room. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. we've, got, uh, we've got our good friend Jatarvis in the booth. Say hi, Jatarvis. Hi. <laughs> so Hi. spirited. Really keeps it keeps it up. Oh, yeah, man, he is he is bringing it up today. Uh, you can visit us on Facebook, Marvel News for Marvel fans. Like us, follow us there. Uh, we're also all on Twitter uh, at Marvel Schmoes. I'm also at the Matt Key. You can find me at M Placo. At Matt Cook tweeted. Uh, and uh, we've got uh, Adam Gertler here today. What's your Twitter? Yes. Hi. I'm Adam Gertler at oh. Adam Gertler. Oh. Oh. You can also find me oh. uh, at uh, DC Movies SK uh, because we do the DC Movie No Show oh. here. Yeah. That's right. yeah. yeah. I, I would assume with that shirt. Oh what? Oh this. Oh this old thing. This old thing. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you invite a traitor onto our show? He's not a traitor. He's... Tell tell her about the long history of crossovers. Oh right. Giant size Batman versus Hulk. We're doing an amalgam today. Superman He's versus He's playing Spidey? Dark Claw. He's Dark oh, Claw dark today. Claw. Yeah. Dark Claw. Uh, you can follow us on YouTube at youtubecom uh, popcorn talk network or you can go to popcorntalk.com. Follow them on Twitter at the at the popcorn talk. Uh, also, please don't forget to... So, yes. Yeah, well, I actually want to address something real quick. That oh, it's really, it. really it. imperative that if you do follow us on youtube.com slash uh, Schmoes No Podcast, we are switching to the Popcorn Talk, yes. Talk Network, so you want to resubscribe because yeah. that is our new home. Yes. That's our new home. Yeah. Yeah. So go find us there. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and rate us on iTunes. Keeps us coming uh, back to you every single week. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, just want to remind everyone before we get started in anything, none of us are experts here. We've read a lot. We know a lot. But we're fans just like you. If we get things wrong, be gentle with us and, and kindly correct us. Take our, take you our guys hands had and some yours. Threats? I've had a guy try to hit me with a Batmobile. <laughs> yeah. A couple times. Yeah. He was actually trying to cram the knowledge into you? Yeah. Or was he just no, like... No, he was mad that we weren't talking DC about guy. DC. Oh, right. But now By the way, that show, show just for that. That man was uh, Adam West, by yeah. the way. Yeah. Just yeah. so you know. It was it was kind of surreal he for He was all just all confused. Yeah, yeah, he was. <laughs> no, that would be Burt Ward. <laughs> Oh, I just I feel bad now. Life. Uh, anyway, so uh, Adam, yes. welcome to the show. It's exciting to have a DC guy in here. Even it's though so we great all... to be here. You know, the first time I was here, you and I were in these very same positions. Yeah, and we were we, we were, were debating, f- debating, and it was you know, look, it was put in the in the in the idea that it was meant to be a debate, and we really had to go at each other. But the fact is. I'm a Marvel fan as much as a DC fan, and I'm a DC fan. We're not debating the two the two universes. It was we had to take. It was like if you were on Debate Squad and you were like, "All right, you have this you have this side of the argument, and you have that side of the argument." And what was the argument? What's better? It was it was, it was like, after the DC slate, right? Who made out. the bigger announcement? Who was making the bigger news? DC versus Marvel. Wow, yeah. and yeah. you won. You I won. did. It was, I it did. Was but I was, I, was, I was playing dirty. I was really. You were playing real I was like and, being loud and, and pushy and, and just. Trying to, how could you win that? Because I mean, I, listen. I'm not. I'm not going to hate I'm on really, DC. Really good. Okay. You are very good. Because you Marvel so should have won that for you. No, I know. <laughs> Why? I'm so disappointed. I'm disappointed. I still wear that on my back. Like that is a monkey that will never leave. We have to bury those hatchets. Bury those mallets. Hammers. Mjolnir's and, uh, and those Mjolnir's. Oh, we can get like Harley's mallet and Thor's Mjolnir. Oh, exactly. Oh, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Next time you should bring in Harley's mallet. Why I do we have that? I do. I do. Oh. I do. <laughs> He, he really likes to crossplay as Harley yeah. Quinn. So, it, that, uh, that was the number one uh, cosplay at yeah. the New York Comic Con. Oh, I'm mm-hmm. sure. Yeah, I'm sure. It's a good one. Uh, so <laughs> you are on DC Movie News with, yep. the, with the Schmoes and the Popcorn Talk. Yeah, network. with Roxy Stryer and Johnny LaQuasta. Yeah, it's nice. a good show. If you're not watching it and you're a DC fan, go check it out. Uh, what else are you doing? Uh, I also do a show on FX called FX Movie Download. So that airs uh, most Friday nights when they show like a lot of those movies that you've seen a thousand times on FX, but they <laughs> yeah. want to repackage it and do something new. <laughs> so Sasha Pearl Raver and I will do uh, what they call interstitial commentary. A lot of times we're really lucky and we get to interview filmmakers. Super cool. Uh, and then we get to kind of just like throw to some of the bonus content and you know just talk about behind the scenes stuff and yeah. also kind of geek out. But it's a little bit more of a rigid format, you know, because we've got like 
12 seconds to talk here before we go to commercial. So you don't get to just, just like spew like you do on Popcorn Talk, which is yeah, so cool. Which yeah. is great. Well, we've also got uh, Matt Cook's friend Greg. Uh, he's on the couch. Say hi, Greg. That's right. Hello. Yeah, Greg. <laughs> that was great. You were great. Uh, he was so guy. nervous about saying hello, and you just nailed it. You just it. nailed it, man. You did You're, a great job. We're really all really proud hard. of you. Yeah. I thought he was going to go with high. It seemed like he was working That's on what he high was saying yeah, in until the bathroom. Things started, and yeah. then he just flipped it. He, yeah. He, he surprised all of us. Yeah. He came in with a different one. He felt so. the room, made yeah. the adjustment. <laughs> yeah. Good, good really for you. Good. I was going to do salutations, but. No. Uh, too far. Yeah. Too far. Don't apologize. You did a great job. You did great. Uh, Next time. So uh, <laughs> we've got back. we've got thank you thank you <laughs> we've got lots of news to cover today. We may, uh, may not actually get to uh, talk about uh, comic books too much because we have so much news to catch up on. It happens. Uh, but uh, we are going to be talking you, you about. You just changed that order on me. Oops. Oh no! I know, it's but from from there, I told you Tarvis a different order. But and it's up there. It's I know, on the but board. I have to go off of this. Do you think you can see that when you're in the booth? No. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, so we're having is, a little bit of a production. This is how it happens. This is, yeah. how this is, all this goes is the magic. Down. This is behind the scenes. This is, the, scenes. Yeah, this is the Blu ray okay. extras. Uh, well, this, we're this kind be... of stuff happens on DC Movie News all the time. Not oh, really. this is what happens <laughs> when Matt Key <laughs> decides he wants to take over the producer role. Uh, and I'm uh, like, uh, uh, come uh, on. Uh, uh, whatever. One whatever. Thing I do. <laughs> one thing I can do. Thanks a lot, Gertler. You and your Flash t shirt. Uh, so what? what? It's not Flash. It's Flash. It's, oh, oh, Captain Marvel. Sorry. Sorry. I just call him Shazam these days, okay? <laughs> well, that's what I was going to say. I think he's starting to sow the seeds of the sun because he's not actually Shazam. We have a, a Black Adam situation. Oh, oh, Black Adam. Nice. Yeah. That's my new nickname, and I love it. Yeah. It's great, right? Thank you. It's a good one. I can't believe that uh, wasn't already in play. Never. <laughs> wow. Please. My mother never called me <laughs> her little Black Adam. <laughs> oh, what a terrible mom. <laughs> Uh, uh, so we're going to talk we've got some Marvel news uh, some casting news we've got a lot of casting news yep. and, and uh, casting uh, first up we have Netflix uh, <laughs> no I'm just trying to make your head explode that's oh, coming wow. later so uh, over at Marvel we've got uh, Daniel Bruhl cast in the Captain Mar Marvel uh, Captain America look what you've done to me the Captain America movie that. And uh, possibly the Doctor Strange movie, according to some reports, he's going to be the villain in Doctor Strange, uh, but not all of the reports are saying the same thing. So, uh, uh, yeah, Daniel Bruhl, Bruhl he was in uh, Inglorious Bastards and Rush, and uh, uh, Kevin Feige says, with Daniel's ability to deliver intense, nuanced performances, we knew we had found yet another great actor to share the screen with some of our biggest heroes, and lots of people are saying he's going to be uh, Baron Zemo. Hey, well, Zemo yeah. spent a lot of time looking over his shoulders, so it's Who's gonna lots go of people? really well. J lots of people on the internet I've seen, like just oh, those people, those yeah. people. <laughs> the Doctor Dooms of the world are all saying. Wait, did Zemo. you also hear? And some people even threw out a crazy Red Skull. <laughs> oh no. no, I've heard, I've heard that too. That he's the re reincarnation of Red Skull. My favorite is Modok. Hmm. Yeah, 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 no one, no one. I no, didn't know that was. A, no. I didn't know that was. I a, mean, that's, that's a great character. Life. I'd love to see they get in there. Yeah. I, you know, but I think he's going to be. Uh, uh, isn't Modok like on like a, a screen or something like that? Or he's he's the floating. He's, he's, the, he's the giant yeah. head that Which, sits in the sea. Right, he's yeah. the giant head. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Arnim Zola is the yeah. is the yeah, Arnim Zola, yeah. Yeah. organism but, designed only for killing. But they managed to make Zola really awesome in BA in the in Winter Soldier. He was so freaking cool. I just saw it again the other day. I was kind of sick all week. Yeah. And yeah. All, I got to admit, all I wanted to do all week was like the one movie I wanted to just like on demand because there's so much TV to get through. It was mm -hmm. like I want to watch Winter Soldier yeah. again straight up. Yeah. That movie is so fucking good. It's, it's so, so good. good. Oh, I didn't it's okay. Oh, he's you did that us on purpose. Us. You are I sabotaging, sabotaging us. Yeah. Let's just say freaking. No, no, the you movie is sabotaging us. <laughs> it's just amazing. Like that 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 movie to me, not to get off topic, but just the weight and the way they met, made Cap feel like like it felt like the comic books. Yep. Yeah. Like the speed and everything. Like, you know, up till then, like when movies they'd show a guy running fast and it looks kind of yeah. weird or throwing a shit. It just didn't have the, the weight. Yeah. yeah. And, and he was so good. Well, and, and they a, made Hydra scary. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, which has never been like scary green, to me. Green, green, you know, suited. Minions and and they're like I always thought Hydra and AIM are kind of silly, really silly. But yeah. the Russo brothers brought so much life to yeah. the Cap films, and Winter Soldier was one of my my favorites. And the way they handled uh, Zola, who I I love because yeah. uh, he's this crazy walking TV man that looks yeah. like you know Krang. Yeah, yeah. and Krang. They just brought he was so scary. Much. He, he was, was great, and then yeah. he, he they creepy. even rationalized the whole monologuing mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. they you, you, you let him monologue, yeah. and they said, oh, but this is why I've been monologuing like yeah. this. Yeah, because yeah. now you blow up. <laughs> so good. And I love like they had like the whole the weird camera thing that they zoomed in on. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh even in the first movie you're talking about. No no, no the, well this... no in the first movie they had like the weird magnifying glass right, right. behind yeah. it. In the second movie 
they go down to that bunker. They're like, what is this? And then there's that weird mm-hmm. camera thing that like triggers on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the, the security camera. Yeah. Oh, yeah. so it was cool. great. It was so good. Now, if they if they do bring in uh, Brule as Zemo, what... You know what can we tell our our non comic reading audience about Baron uh, Zemo? Well, well, do we want to do it, Greg? Do you want to? You are our Baron Zemo expert, self proclaimed. Do you want to take this? Do you want to run with who Baron Zemo is? <laughs> well, uh, Baron Zemo is a interesting character. First of all, it depends if you're talking about Heinrich or Helmut. There's two of them. Uh, I th- it's like Baron Zemo one and Baron Zemo <laughs> two. Yeah, well, like, well, I think it's actually the twelfth and the thirteenth of the Zemo line. Oh, okay. Oh wow. Uh, but I, I I don't know. No one is saying. I my guess is that it's going to end up being Heinrich, which the is the guy one. with the, the furry shoulders. I think that's Helmet. Yeah. Yeah. I think that that's one. the second one. Let's I think have that's that the second one. one. Yeah. Yeah, right. the, and the sword wielding, and his his hood is like a little more fitted to his face. I'm remembering the images from the handbook of the Marvel Universe that I used yeah. to collect. This yeah, game, and right. Like, Baron Zemo. But okay, Baron but Zemo. What, <laughs> what role does he play within in the Cap universe? Uh, he plays quite a few, I think, mm-hmm. at different yeah. times. And he's, yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. Greg knows he, more than I do. So he killed. Uh, well, they thought he killed Bucky. Attached, he uh, he he stole basically a plane, and. Uh, Captain America and Bucky were trapped on that plane. Captain falls out, lands in the ocean, gets yeah. unfrozen years later. They think Bucky dies in the explosion. And yeah. Heinrich essentially... He know, was the one who Bucky. did that. Yeah. I think that's in Captain America 6 or something. Or yeah. uh, uh, Avengers number mm-hmm. 6 where they, they did so, yeah, that. He's, he's evil. But in the modern yeah. law, what, what, in the modern lore, I mean, I remember like when I started collecting, I think Zemo was already dead. So I guess he was he a big villain in like the seventies and like when Captain America was like in the so prime he's, of his run. He's, he's kind of a, a big character in the sixties because he redefines Captain. It helps redefine Captain America for the Silver Age. Because mm-hmm. in the Golden Age, I don't think he actually. I think he was actually gunned down by like gangsters or something like that, and that's how they killed him in the Golden Age. And then they rewrote it in the Silver Age with Zemo killing him Red and time. Bucky at the same time. Yeah. Uh, and it was twenty years later, so Stanley could do that. Uh oh. Uh oh. Jatarvis has a question. What's <laughs> What is it, Jatarvis? Uh, well, as we all know, Captain America 3 is Civil War. Yeah. How does this character play into that storyline? Uh, well, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I think that um, one of the things that he's most known for is Masters of Evil. He creates the Masters of Evil. I think right. Crossbones yes. is a member of the Masters of Evil at some point, right? In the comics, uh, Iron Man actually enlists Baron Zemo Helmut to uh, gather all the supervillains to go on his side. So that could oh, be in the initial, Civil War. During, during no, the that's Civil right. War. That's yeah. right. Yeah, no, that is so good. So that could be, even though he, apparently he was doing that. And, and it looks like Iron Crossbones Man. will be, because we saw uh, that that character, like, yeah. scarred up. He will yeah. come he back the, as Crossbones. Now, not to get too nerdy, but do, will we Nerd. see a power broker? Like, help? <laughs> Isn't that, like, part of Crossbones' thing? Does he get, like, power brokered up? Come on, I don't want to talk about, like, John Walker and all oh that kind of stuff. Don't know. I, I, you're out nerding me. Power right broker there. is a guy in the Marvel universe who you go to and you like you give him a certain yeah. amount of money and he jacks you up. Yeah. Oh. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, He's I, the I super yeah, There's a lot of like guy. black market like power mm-hmm. uh, like augmentation and stuff that you yes. can do and yeah. he's one of the guys. Yeah. And oh, uh, John know, Walker, who took over for Steve Rogers one of the times when he was walking around as a U.S. agent and yeah. all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. He was. Uh, yeah. John Walker was, was he the nomad. Guy that, who he was, was nomad. nomad. Uh, okay. I think Steve Rogers was nomad. And then maybe Switch. I think John Walker was nomad too. I think they swapped. So I, I need a geek alert button. Geek <laughs> alert. Know, geek, geek alert. alert. All, right, geek all right. So how he could fit in is uh, I, I think he's going to be um, vaguely in the background of Civil, in Civil War. Because the way they're talking about him, he's not going to be the main villain. I think he's going to be kind of like the ticking clock of the, of the film with them fighting each other. It's There's going to be a bigger threat going on with Zemo. Mm-hmm. And I think that's going to end up if he is in Doctor Strange, I think that's how they play into Doctor what Strange. What I like to think about is that Tony Stark still recruits Zemo, who is one of Cap's oldest enemies, and Cap is not cool with it. And oh. he's like, no, oh. Captain America, I know maybe you and my father had your differences, but I am telling you I'm on the level. Well, so yeah. And then he's Zemo really a- not. And he's acting through the Superhuman Registration Act or whatever that is right. in the Civil War. And he's, I think, maybe plotting against Captain America while at the same time shaking his hand. And but like Stark doesn't know that because he's no. not yeah. overtly going right. right. Yeah. And, and Stark's mm. like, trust him, Cap, give him a chance. And then and, and that's going to blow up in Stark's so, face. He's and gonna got blow such up a Cap's big face. ego anyway, right. Stark. Right. So he's and like, he's no, like he's I got fine. it. Because we know that a lot of the what we're getting from the, uh, from the Ultron mythology and moving forward is this constant reaching back into the 40s and the 60s with uh, Stark's father yeah. and all that kind Agent of stuff. Agent Carter and the SSR. Bringing all that. And I love how they keep 
keep they're intertwining that really, really well. Yep. So it would make sense that like Stark's reaching back into the past. This guy he worked on the original Ultron Imperative, or yeah. you know he worked on the original Super Soldier Project, and, yeah. and this his descendant is now going to be working with yeah, us. Yeah, he's present. trying to the, the son's trying to make up for the sins of the father, it, which yeah, is something be, that I think a lot of characters in the Iron Man universe are attempting to do, well, including Iron Man. Also, something that can do is it can bring in the father in Agent Carter, right, and start establishing oh, that. Yeah, yeah, Heinrich. Yeah, mm-hmm. that would be great. Which, going back to Heinrich, yeah, which yeah. I think now that we're like you know a season into into Shield, I think with Carter, I think they're they're figuring out how to do this stuff with the TV yeah. stuff yeah. better. Yeah. I think yeah. there was like it's obviously so growing much better. pains, so yeah. much better. But I think they know what they're doing now. All right, so uh, Jatarvis, did we answer your question at all? Did we help you out there, buddy? Uh, you lost me at Nomad. Uh, <laughs> we lost no, a I lot. Got of he looks a little like this guy, by the way. Nomad. He looks I a little bit so. like the the red and yellow Daredevil. You think? No, no, homie. Okay, no. guys. Okay. Uh, so uh, we've also got, uh, over at Marvel, we've got the Russo brothers rumored to be directing the Infinity Wars. Um, yeah, it looks the like Infinity they're Wars being movies, give, yeah. uh, given the king uh, keys to the keys kingdom. To the kingdom if yeah. You, yeah, I'm pretty stoked because the Russo brothers are they're nerds. At, at their core, they are yeah. giant nerds. If you've ever watched that like, community at all, you see so many comic book, video game references. That's why I love that show. Yeah, it's yeah. phenomenal. And they've handled Cap so well, and they've they've made a franchise out of the Captain America movies, where yeah. I feel the Iron Man were the flagship for now. I think Cap is kind of going that way, and if they give them Infinity Wars, it's really going to solidify yeah. where Marvel's going to go in their Phase 3 and, and wrap it up, and I think they have they have what it takes to make it work i think it's interesting that winter soldier especially was so grounded and so real and yeah. so uh earth-based mm-hmm. and i think putting them in infinity war would be a really interesting thing to see what they can do cosmically yeah because uh, i thought the visuals of of uh winter soldier were fantastic yeah. and, and all that so it'd be interesting to take them out of espionage and spies and, and military forces and put them in a cosmic scale. I don't know, it'd be interesting to see what they could do. Yeah. Well, I think what, what that movie proved, Winter Soldier, is that you can take great storytellers who don't necessarily have all this experience working with multi-hundred million dollar budgets because the Marvel Brain, Struch, Brain Trust and the Kevin Feige team has got all that down. Yeah. They've yeah. already got the action sequences storyboarded out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But what makes these movies magic is filling in the heart and the characters. That's when you bring in great storytellers because yeah. these films are collaborative efforts. And that's you know, that's probably why, uh, you know, we lost uh, uh, Edgar Wright, you know, for, mm-hmm. for Ant-Man is because he was more of an autonomous filmmaker. Yeah, I just, I just, I just Oh, no, I just shrunk. So I, I think that they're making the right choices based on, like, guys who tell great stories. Which and, I think has to be yeah. primary. Yeah, Absolutely. I agree. Absolutely. Uh, we've also got uh, James Gunn denying rumors that uh, Guardians of the Galaxy will set up Infinity War. That's the movie, I think, that comes right before... No, not before. It comes before Captain Marvel. Yeah. Then we do. Uh, it comes after I, Black Panther, before Captain Marvel, and then we go into Infinity War. And I, he's saying that they're yeah. not going to have anything to do with the Infinity War stuff. I think that's fair because there's so much. There's so much going on with other movie tie-ins to Infinity War that Guardians kind of set its own little cosmic scale, and I think it's okay for them to go off and do their own story. Yeah. I mean, they they set up a lot with Thanos already that yeah. they can kind of go on and finally tell their own story, which I think is going to be Peter Quill's or like father story. Yeah, me too. I, I think we're going to get yeah. Jason or whoever I, they choose. I, I, I think they'll hit a little bit yeah. on They have to. I mean, with stuff. just be... with Drax and Gamora alone, yeah. you can't not yeah. have mm-hmm. Thanos involved. Yeah, but I, it, I, I, and I, I don't think that James Gunn has any reason to, uh, you know, uh, mislead people. Marvel doesn't mm-hmm. really seem to be like playing it like that. Yeah. Like I, I believe what he's saying. There's They're a lot not of JJ characters, Abrams, right? Yeah. Exactly. There's a lot of characters in this movie. People want to see more of those characters, and they want to see more of their story. Now they got the origin stuff out of the way. Like a lot of these movies, like it's like the sequel. The, the first one has to tell the origin, and mm-hmm. the sequels have been just singing yeah. because yeah. now you can just tell a story. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so that's it for Marvel mm-hmm. news uh, that I know of. Uh, so now we're going to head over to Fox, where we get to uh, Jean Grey and Cyclops casting has started. Ba 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 ba. That's kind of exciting for everyone. He's kind of everyone sees this face I'm making. What? What? <sighs> what? what? It's just, not a happy face. It's not a happy face. You, why are you not happy, Marina? Uh, well, okay. So I I love Jean Grey. Obviously, no, she's your, fa- she's she's, your Doctor Strange, she's right? She's my Doctor Strange. You never tell from your hair color. I know. <laughs> there's, a, there's a reason why I went from Emma Blonde, which I'm natural, to Jean Grey, Grey Red. But that's a Sophie's choice. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Well done. So I I see where they're going. So with. What Fox is trying to do for Apocalypse is they are casting younger for Jean and Cyclops. Well, let's 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 get the names out there real yeah. quick. So for well, Jean Grey, they're looking at Chloe Moretz, Elle Fanning, and Haley Steinfeld. Those are the three names and, that have been thrown out. And big names. You they're know, big names for for, for Jean the, Grey. For, yeah, yeah, for those for uh, that character in that age. And group. then Cyclops, they're looking at Ben Hardy, Charlie Rowe, and Timothy Chalamet. Chalamet. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know 
any of the, the well, they're, like, and they're, they're going with, with they're going with lesser established characters, for yeah. Cyclops, which is which is All kind right, of so safe. your beef with uh, so, Jean Grey, not my or beef, the cast, well, the cast. Okay, so. I, I, of course, love the Age of Apocalypse storyline. That is the storyline that I would like to see. I, I don't think that's the one they're going to do. I think they're going to end up doing a completely different one. But it's so young. The characters are so young. I know it's supposed to be set in the 80s, but I feel like it's going to be more of a coming of age. It's not going to be some crazy AU. It'll be Gene and Cyclops discovering their powers for the first time. And I was kind of hoping to see something like late teen, early 20s, so we could actually see them fighting and kicking ass and doing I think what they do. we can still see that. I don't know. I mean, I the, think, the powers I, are going to be so strong. Like, uh, I think it's going to be more like how we were introduced to Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver and Avengers. I think they're going to be coming into their powers. I think with, with them going this young in casting, I think it's going to be like, we're going to see Cyclops in the orphanage, you know, some flashbacks. So it'll, it'll be no, very I don't think he's that old when he's in the class. orphanage. I don't think so. I think I think it's interesting. I think it's an exciting. I mean, as far as the age range goes, they're all in in the point where you know it would look like their powers have already manifested. And I think at that age, when mutants are younger yeah. in those, the books, the powers are out of control and they don't know how to control them. So we might actually get more flare ups and more power and more destruction, which could and, be cool, which could yeah. be really cool. And that's also, I think, in the original stories, all the X Men, the first class, were so young yeah. Yeah. that yeah. there's no, yeah. there's nothing stopping them from being a mate. Like here, you know, whatever they're, they're children. In, no, in, they are. In the they, early I mean, they issues. literally are children. Yeah. in the, the early issues. I mean, that's one of the issues that Cyclops has in current run with. The way that he feels Xavier kind of betrayed their childhood. Right, I mean, yeah. it's a it's a long running theme. But I just I don't, I, I mean I, I guess it does work if if these characters uh, these these young younger actors get signed on for more of a, a long term thing. We'll get to see them grow. Right. Which, I, which I, is think, but it's I think I think that's what they're doing. Yeah. I think they're going to be a, like a longer term thing. I think um, they're setting up a, a larger franchise. I want to see it pick up like early like we see the school is now just established and maybe we yeah. see like yeah. young Jean Grey and Scott are already there and it's training and that's you know that first act of the film is going to be what the, what's the status quo now yeah. in the 80s right. it's cool I yeah, think that works. I mean but I think too I, I don't know how much we'll get from them because mm -hmm. Fox has made it very clear that they want Jennifer Lawrence to be the front runner of the yeah. universe of the well, X Men universe, that, that, which is so weird to me that Mystique would ever be the central yeah. X Man. That's, that's the yeah. main problem. As, as as much as these films kind of get better, that's the problem where you have like you know with Feige's whole thing is like, look, we have the comics are our bible. We build out of that, and we have all this mythology to build from. And when you get like with Fox and like look, Fox is they make great movies, but mm -hmm. I think they're really yeah they're thinking like no Jennifer Lawrence, yeah. that's hot. That's where yeah. we gotta go. Yeah. No, they're, they're so that much, yeah. They yeah. have so much more of a studio attitude over there. It's, so much. It's very much like, oh, well, you know, Jean Grey and Cyclops are, no, well, uh, that Jennifer Lawrence, she's <laughs> yeah. much... So uh, that's where I would be concerned more than anything is just the fact that I think a lot of other characters, I think the, the, the leaders of those universes are being shifted in order yeah. to sell tickets. Mm -hmm. Every once in a while, they need to stop themselves and say, hey, 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 we're making the decisions. We have the money. We're also the people that greenlit X-Men Origins Wolverine. Right. Yeah. We did that. We, did we that. can't undo slap that. slap their own knuckles. Yeah. Uh, well, that that all brings us to the next thing, which is uh, um, uh, that the X Men Apocalypse movie is apparently mm -hmm. going to center around a Mystique and Magneto love story. Uh, which, as we all remember from, um, I mean, yeah, that, that, that was, happened in uh, uh, issue. Uh, uh, that, uh, never. There was the issue never. It was issue never. never, right? It was issue never. Let's see. Yeah. Mag yeah. Magneto had his wife. He had he had Magda, uh, which we never, you know, really yeah. see. Magda oh, and the he, and one Wendigo. Yeah, one Wendigo. Yeah, one Wendigo. Wendigo. No, yeah, Wendigo. No, no, it's Wendigo. It's Wendigo Mountains. It's where Scarlet Witch goes. And then nerdy. He has an on again, off again thing with. Rogue, which is a little weird, a little weird. That's mostly an age of a age of Apocalypse. No, that's yeah, not yeah. true. That has become uh, that has is been that established. Yeah. Not currently. I mean, it had a mainline theme yeah. out of like one of the second um, Age of Apocalypse type but stories. He it but was yeah. it was with Rogue. Nothing has ever Rogue. been with Mystique. No. Yeah. In fact, Mystique has a baby with Xavier in the current run of comics, and Mystique uh, has also been with Wolverine. Which look fine, you know. Look, it's it's not the comics; it's the I movies. Know. They have their own continuity. Yeah, yeah, and that's I'm, with, I'm with you on that. I'm always with you on that. It's just it's it's so the Fox is forcing a love quadrangle at this point because you have Beast who's in love with Mystique, you have Xavier who has this weird attachment to Mystique from his childhood, and now suddenly Mystique and Magneto are going to go get their. It's rocks just the off. fact that it's it's 
it's Jennifer Lawrence. Everyone has a crush on Jennifer Lawrence. Well, I think they're just playing that. And you know what's really messed up too is like Nicholas Holt, the actor. Have you seen? He's like in a lot of car commercials now, right? Mm-hmm. Wait, yeah. really? Yeah, yeah. He's doing these like uh, like Jaguar or something commercials. Oh, that's like, dude awesome. is super good looking. Yeah. He's so good looking that when you put him in a movie next to Michael Fassbender and James McAvoy, like he's beast. That's how good looking wow. these actors are, and it makes me mad. That's all I want to <laughs> yeah. say. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, so that's. Do we have anything else on? Because I want to move on. No, to the I next don't thing. care about no. that. I don't want to give it any airtime. I think that's a mistake. <laughs> because, because talking about it makes it even more real. Well, I just don't care. I just think. Yeah. I just. I see what that is. I see that. I see that. I see that's transparent to me. Yeah. And I don't like. I don't like yeah. it. All right. Well. How do you like the news that uh, Fantastic Four, the villain, Dr. Doom, is going to be an angry internet blogger? I think it's great, man. I think especially for this year, you know, it's 1999. I think that's cutting edge, <laughs> like a brilliant take. Like, let's put somebody behind a keyboard. That's amazing. And let's have, a, like, he gives them, the, like, the, the internet call sign of Doom. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. He's, he should be, he was, like, in an offshoot of Hackers. That's actually right. what the Fantastic Four movie is, is a hacker's like sequel. And his his name is uh, Victor Domashev, not Victor yes. Von Doom. He's so not from Latveria. Which he is fine. In New York, Victor like, Von Doom is a little yeah. on the nose. I get yeah. it. You know. It's but fine. He's, who, rep, who, he's repping my Eastern European people. Who? I'm just I'm just saying, Marvel has a raccoon that talks and climbs a walking talking tree. Whose last name is Raccoon. Raccoon. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Like how on the nose is that? And everyone fell in love with it. And then well, they Fox called him like, Rocket in the film. They never yeah. called him Rocket Raccoon. Well, That's true. Very true. Guys, but, yes. I think Fox is being really progressive here and they are using uh, Victor Doom, the social justice warrior, to tackle some of the hard hitting issues we've faced this year. I think he's actually going to be a very pro feminist blogger. He's oh. going to be anti Gamergate. I think he's going to have a lot, a lot of opinions. Yeah. And I think what the the real problem here hear is that he is going to fight the diverse group of Fantastic Four because their ideologies get mixed up yeah. because they're all really at the core fighting for the rights for everyone. That's really okay. what they're Okay, want. can I be devil's advocate since I am from the opposite show here? I've been thinking about this a lot and I've been defending this movie for a while and when I first heard this news I was gut punched I really yeah. was because yeah. the whole thing is the guy's a monarch of a nation it really makes him a different level of a yeah. threat however let's assume that not just a blogger but this is a guy who can access the the internet and the web in a way that it can bring down governments he well, can yeah. seriously yeah. I mean there's, everything's controlled by computers if you really control everything you can really dominate the world in a more realistic way yeah. than some like young kid for. who's like I am the I am the monarch of this nation also just like Joe Francis from uh, the the uh, Girls Gone Wild he bought an island eventually this guy could generate monies and form his own island and maybe in sequels get a nation you know well, yeah. in, in, all, in all reality I mean that is kind of the new modern world threat we're not really, I mean, you know, sometimes we're afraid of like Russia or, or China, but it's the those unsettled nations, these single like, you know, groups that can take down. They have less you, to yeah. lose. They're small. Exactly. They're not organized. I, I, no, I, I mean, I, I was being sarcastic before about my social justice warrior rant, but in all reality, I think it is a smarter move to touch on the younger generation because they are very keyed into that. And I think it's 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 not speaking to us comic book fans. It is speaking to a completely different generation of moviegoers. But I think it's it's a bold move on their part, and I'm actually kind of excited to see what they're going to do with this. And the books aren't selling. Uh oh. Uh oh. Jatarvis, what do you got for us? All right, I'm not. I I know who Doom is. I'm a fan of Fantastic Four. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm not super familiar with his uh, super evil powers. I th- doesn't he use like a lot of magic and sorcery? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He he's actually a really interesting character because he's one of the only ones in the entire Marvel universe who is both very smart technologically, but he's also a, very smart with magic. magic. Yeah, he's a yeah. Tech, he's a technomancer. That's a great way to put it. How are they gonna put it. magic? Like they're, he's but, almost like not. a Doctor not. Strange, isn't he? No, but well, he's he's yeah. on he's in that same kind of ballpark he's he's like if you mix the best parts of Doctor Strange and the best parts of Tony Stark and put him into one person the Fox world tends to be more grounded that seems yeah. to be what they're going for right. yeah. that's their mandate in the mutant world and that's kind of like what their mandate is in, in, in the Fantastic Four yeah. it seems like it seems like they're even trying to ground it even more I mean they've got Josh Trank directing who did Chronicle and that which was amazing that's why real, you know so that film was so good that's why like I've been defending everything I'm like look Fantastic Four is not doing great as a book it has not well, been that's a top why they for a long you know? time like like let's let's I, I've always been saying like look let's be open to a, a revision now if this Fantastic Four property was at Marvel Studios totally different totally yeah. different because they have nailed the tone and where Spider-Man and Fantastic Four could live in that world tomorrow and we would yeah. love it yeah. but for Fox's world I 
I, you know, I, I really want to believe that it's going to be good. I am nervous that they they don't seem confident enough in this property yeah. Yeah. that they haven't been giving us anything. They're not putting anything out. Yeah, except except things like he's a blogger yeah. and it's gritty and real. And, and yeah, it's the way like letting these, the like, actors buzzwords. come out and say this stuff, yeah. it's like what the heck going it's, on? It's Simon sound Kimber? bites. Yeah. They're yeah. they're sitting and giving sound bites, and I think I'm afraid it's going to end up more like. Uh, Wolverine Origins versus, you know. I really hope I don't not. think that'll happen. I don't know what could. If you nail the thing now, <laughs> but wait, if you get Thing right and yeah. Thing is an orange Rocky monster that's a great CGI creature, you've like got half the battle for me. Seriously, yeah. Thing is also being played by Billy Elliot, but CG. And I, and I, but I think he's a great actor. Like I like him. Jamie Bell, I think is great. But but that that's I don't know. Like yeah, I don't know. I'm excited to see what he does with Chick it. Chick did yeah. a great job. I thought as a thing. Yeah, I, I thought I, like, I thought I vocally, it. but he looked really short. But he, yeah, it was I was just so watching the movie the other day. And he was yeah. like five foot two. Yeah, yeah. and rubber. Like he looked like a Stretch Armstrong doll. Like, oh, you know, it was yeah. like it looked like yeah. it was made out of that material. So uh, Jatarvis, did we answer your question about Doom at all? Uh, yeah, you did. I just don't understand how you make the jump from like a sorcerer, which is such a I've huge never known him. I've just ignored him. I've never known him as a sorcerer. He's a hacker. He's he's very vaguely a sorcerer. He grew up, I mean, he was from a gypsy like family and uh, his mother was killed at some point and he he actually did a, a crossover with Doctor Strange that Mike Mignola drew. Oh, oh wow. Tri- like Trial and Triumph, it's really good. That and they, sounds amazing. They actually traveled to hell searching for Doctor Doom's, uh, the mother, so the soul of Doctor Doom's. they crossover with oh. Hellboy? No, yeah. they don't. That would, they be, don't. That would but, be cool. But this is like back in the like late 80s when Mignola was really coming into his uh, own. Mm. So you can imagine maybe that's where yeah. Hellboy started to kind of oh, come around. That's cool. But yeah, if you haven't read that Doctor Strange, Doctor Doom crossover, it's really good. I'll pick it up. Yeah. I've always seen Doom as a tech-based villain. He's a lot more yeah. tech-based. seems what they're doing just char- for the initial character stuff is tech. So that seems yeah, like the seems, easiest power set and it, to it at least like, begin with. And, and then I, maybe I like where stuff. you're going with like the programming because that is yeah. kind of like the tech of our you day. You could bring like, down everything. That's you a great call. Really yeah. And I hope, call. I hope that's what they go with. And I know I'm always like, wah, wah, Which about Which is funny because it's also kind of the plot of Superman 3. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> done a little bit smarter. But Yeah. I hope it's done. I would love to love it. Yeah. I would love yeah. to love a Fantastic yeah. Four movie. Yeah. Yeah. That would be awesome. Yeah, um, we'll see. Uh, Hopefully so, one day. Uh, real quick, going over to Sony, there's no real news except a couple weeks ago they Ugh. said that there might be an Aunt May movie. There is not going to be We're an We're going to do May a Golden movie. Oldie movie. What is going on, I, man? Sony has no idea what they're doing over there. And like, they just dropped the, the Jobs so, movie, too? Like, what's going on? Like, they're trying so hard to hold on to Spider-Man, and they don't know how because Spider-Man 2 didn't do as well as they were hoping. Sometimes so if I you think love they're the Spider-Man, you have to let him go. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah, right? Anyway, that, guy swing, that, that, rumor, that rumor was squashed. They're not actually doing that, but it was. I just wanted to say something about Sony, <laughs> like it, like Spider Man. I know we've on. been we've been neglecting them. It's their fault. It's not, we're not neglecting They're them. Neglecting. They're neglecting us. Yes. Mm-hmm. All right. So going over to even bigger news over at Netflix, we're finally getting some casting lists on Jessica Jones and uh, Luke Cage. Really? Have, you, have you heard? Have you haven't heard I this? did not. I've no? not heard okay, this. So, breaking to me. Uh, uh-huh. So they're doing Daredevil. That's supposed to come out in 2015. The cannot next movie. Wait. No, right? Yeah. It looks it's, cannot I can't, wait. like the costume. Just like oh, come oh, on, can't wait. Uh, but uh, they're also doing Jessica Jones. That's going to be the next one. And the cast that they've uh, that's come out so far. I think it was Deadline that reported it. Uh, Kristen Ritter, uh, Alexandra Daddario, Teresa Palmer, Jessica DeGao, and Marin Ireland. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not familiar with Marin. Uh, mm. Kristen Ritter, and uh, that's Alexandra yeah. Daddario. Uh, she was in True Detective, if you ever watched that show. A couple times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Kristen Ritter from Breaking Bad. Uh, that's Teresa Palmer that you just saw. That's Kristen Ritter. Uh, and uh, Jessica DeGao, uh, you might know her from uh, Arrow, where she's played the Huntress. Hmm. So. Yeah. Oh. And uh, Marin Ireland, I, I'm not familiar with who she is. She's from the we Divide, but that, sure but that news was just released today. like a couple yeah. hours ago. So, cool. uh, so yeah, what do we? Uh, Jessica Jones, do we know anything about her? Like, no, uh, no. I, you know, I read that uh, the series when Bendis did the, the great Alias, uh, yeah, right. Alias yeah. series, which was really awesome, and it was like one of. I'm those, halfway through it right now. Yeah, it was it's like so one good. of those first series, like kind of like the uh, uh, the Matt Fraction Hawkeye series, where it's like taking a step back from like having to fight supervillains all it's the time. Super good, and it's and really, it's really, really dark. Good. It's and, really and, dark and gritty. And then they just they wrote her, they gave her this whole backstory, and then just kind of inserted her into the Marvel universe, like oh she's been here the whole time. Yeah. It was like great, and then she had like the Purple Man. Which you know, it was well, very cool. Doing some research, getting ready for the show, she apparently showed up in Spider Man number four back in the 60s. Whoa. Okay. And had one line where she was watching, I think, Peter Parker fight Flash Thompson. She had one line. Wow. And they were like, Jessica Jones, come on, or something like that. And that character apparently, Bendis, 
wrote this whole backstory wow. for and brought her forward. He must be like just like a serious human encyclopedia. Well, dude, I know. Well, I know, Marvel right? also has this amazing internal database that you can cross-reference and pull from and look <sighs> up histories. And so a lot of, you know, writers today will go and source from that. And it's it's phenomenal. I only know this because my roommate worked on it when she oh, was at Marvel. So cool. And and some of the stuff that they can pull from, and that's what, especially Bendis, he loves to pick obscure characters yeah. and mm-hmm. bring them to life. Yeah. Because it gives him more freedom. Mm-hmm. He's not, you know, shackled yeah. by all the can, other writers. Yeah. And it, play, it, it does kind of the same thing that Winter Soldier did for Bucky, where it's like they've been here this whole time, they've had this weird backstory this whole time, and it just enriches the universe that much more. Right. Uh, anyway, so Jessica Jones, just real quick, because probably most of our listeners aren't. You need too a really with her. intelligent character, okay? So she's not like a, she doesn't come off as like a, 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 a firebrand necessarily. She's yeah. more of a cerebral character. Like there's a there's a real dark very side. existential. Yeah. yeah, I mean like she's a, a character that had been really wronged a lot. A lot of bad stuff had what's been her, done. What's man. her power set? Okay, her power set is. I mean, she's more or less kind of Superman, not as strong or as invulnerable, but okay. she can fly. Uh, she's super strong and she's almost bulletproof. So almost, so almost. so, another, so like not a, not bulletproof, but like like if you shot her, like she's it, tough. Yeah. She's tough. Okay. okay. Yeah, so, so then, what was the thing? So then, why did she like retire? Wasn't it thing like she was out of no, it for dude, a long time? No, dude. So the way I understand it is that she retired from being a superhero because of the Purple Man. Right. Okay. He just so messed pur- her up so bad. He messed. So the Purple Man. Uh, hopefully, we see him in Zebediah Kilgrave. Oh. Uh-huh. Digging deep. What if Jessica well done, Jones sir. is a black and white series? Would they be that bold oh, to make no. it a total noir? No, no. but that would be awesome. That would be feels, so it awesome. Really it really reads like a noir. real noir yeah. kind yeah. of story. So Purple Man, when she first comes, like she first comes onto the scene, he kidnaps her for a few months. Purple Man is a man who is purple, and His literally, skin, yeah. he's all purple. And if he says, he can tell you what to do. He can he command can enthrall you. you, but it's through pheromones. Yeah. So it's like this very mm-hmm. like weird psychosexual sort of thing. And he held on to her for eight months, made her his slave, and then mm-hmm. sent her after Daredevil, where she got punched in the face by Vision and was in the hospital, and it was just a mess. It's a mess what what happened in this. Uh, yeah, Jessica Purple Jones. Man is awful. He's, He's in the awful. current Daredevil run. Oh, my God. He's in the He's first so bad. New Avengers that Bendis put out, which I, I love that first yeah, trade, yeah, yeah, Breakout, yeah. that first volume Breakout, one New so Avengers good. is so good. Characters uh, like the that, current Daredevil, like in San Francisco, that's yeah. Going on? Oh. yeah, yeah. The last three like issues are, have been all Purple Man. They're so scary because they're so real. With Purple Man? Well, I mean, the obviously, powers, you mean? no, but with the, the the psychological trauma. I mean, oh, yeah, yeah. That, that's he does what, yeah. damage. He does total damage, and that's where apparently, in the same way that Alias picks up, kind of right after that, that's where this is picking up. Purple Man has oh. tormented her. She's hung up the cape. She's not fighting crime anymore. So this anymore. is going to be Alias, pretty much. Oh. It will yeah. be the Netflix series. And that's what everyone is saying. I haven't read the script. So it would I can't be say silly sure. not to. That's, I mean, because yeah. but they're saying that almost the entire series is pulled from Alias. Well, look, the best thing about these comic book stories is when they're told, taken from you know the the the, the sixty years of mythology. Jessica Jones only has a limited amount of mythology. Fortunately, it's a great story written by Brian Michael Bendis, one of the most prolific writers in yeah. modern comics. So they'd be foolish not to mind that story. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. All right. So we've got to move on. Uh, uh, Luke Cage's names are being tossed around. Uh, actor named Lance Gross, another one Mike Coulter, and then just today a guy named Cleo Anthony who doesn't really have a whole lot of credits. Um, but look him up. He, uh, I, I think of the three guys they've announced, he looks super like like when I saw his. I was like, that guy's that guy's Luke Cage. Yeah. So if you're listening, who's that guy? Cleo, who's that think, guy we're seeing right there? Uh, uh, the one up there, I believe, is is, is Lance. that Lance? Yeah, yeah, that's Lance, and then because uh, his Mike eyes Coulter. are entrancing. That's yeah, that's, right. that's Mike Coulter. That's Mike Coulter. Yeah. Uh, Mike Coulter looks like a and young Iris vote? Elba. Mm-hmm. No, my vote is Cleo Anthony yeah. that we don't have a picture of. We just, wow. so, yeah, because he just came, just came out like, today, so we didn't have time to yeah. get it uploaded. Yeah. But that's Mike Coulter. That's Mike Coulter. C O L T. And what was he from? Oh, uh, I forgot to write that down. I don't remember. I'm stealing him from my new pick for Jon Stewart in the Green Lantern oh. movie. You cannot oh. have him. Oh, oh that's He would good. be good, Jon Stewart. Would be good. Oh my <laughs> I can't get to Mike, amazing. we're talking. Don't sign with Netflix yeah. yet. Yeah. Just hang uh, in there, so, uh, But uh, Luke Cage is going to be in six to seven episodes of Jessica Jones and then get his own series. And then after Luke Cage, we're going to get Danny Rand and Iron Fist. Which And then Defenders? And then Defenders. So it's going to be a fifth one will be Defenders? Yeah. yeah. Oh, After they that. introduce all four, they're going to do a fifth series. Crazy? If they can pull these off Dude. to just a level of production Dude. from like a good FX show or Dude. AMC yeah. show, HBO Dude. level, that's what I want to see. Yeah. Yeah. Not like so the ABC, exciting. Fox, so NBC. Like, just give it that 
darkness that yeah. The, yeah. The, you what know are they gonna do with Iron Fist I know That's like amazing. Is, is he gonna lighting me like, like it'd be better than Kung Fu Kung Fu with like great uh, awesome powers yeah like, what's amazing. the name of the dragon the, oh god I forgot. Shun Lao the Undying, Shun Lao, the Undying. I think yeah. it's that I think it's that yeah Kun Lun. it's pretty close to that uh -oh, yes sir uh oh what's up Joe Tarvis uh, real quick I'm not that familiar with Luke Cage I've Luke seen Cage him. Power I've seen Man him in the comics and stuff he, he, he is Power Man he teams up with Iron Fist he's got the tiara and the chain for yeah. a belt. Yeah, uh, blue tights, yellow shirt, deep plunging neckline. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's his uh, main power? His main power is that he's super strong and he he is bulletproof. Like, yeah, his skin yeah. is, is unbreakable. He's big, um, and strong, he is, tough black man. I yeah. mean, that is. I mean, no he is the definition of alpha male too. Like, if you were to put him and Superman in a room together, he like he would not back down. But I like uh, Bruce Willis unbreakable. Mm, uh, uh, no. Uh, less no. less pansy than that. Okay, yeah, gotcha. But Very, he also has a really he's got a good sense of humor. He's a fun he character. Yeah. He's really well rounded and in the comics. His, his best one friend my, is Iron Man. Yeah, one of my favorite or, things. Uh, Iron Fist was I think Brendis uh, wrote it, but Secret Wars, which was yes, the new yeah. one, the, the Nick where, Fury yeah, one, where he, he got yeah. and they yeah. nuked Luke Cage, and he got all these like he they really hit him hard, and he had all these internal injuries. He had to be brought to the hospital, and they couldn't operate on him because his skin is yeah. unbreakable. Yeah. Oh, so they were just so like, cool. he's just, there's nothing, we can't get in there to help him. Whatever they did, oh they, gosh, they knew totally how to take him that. out. Like, I was like, oh, that's incredible. Like, that's he did smart. get hurt and nobody could help him because he's so tough. But originally, I think the power came from, uh, he, I can't think, remember the origin. I think I do. I think it was, he was in prison wrongly and was picked to be part of this experiment that went wrong. And he came out mm. of the experiment. And I think, I don't know if somebody else tried to sabotage it, like almost Captain America-esque. Okay. Wow. And he came out yeah, with super strength right. and unbreakable skin. Huh. I know that they were big in the 70s. Mm -hmm. It was Power Man and Iron Fist. Yeah, were like Heroes popular, for Hire. Yeah. Like, Heroes yeah. for Hire, yeah. That's what I, th I think they should call it Heroes for Hire instead of Defenders. I agree. They've I never been Defenders. Well, and there's, the defenders and there's so many other Doctor cool Strange characters and, yeah. you can bring in with Heroes of Hire. Yeah. So. But aren't, are they Defenders in the modern mythology? No. I don't think they're Heroes for Hire. Defenders. It's Heroes, because Heroes uh, for Hire had a Fearless Defenders oh, kind yeah, of running but I, right now. But, but but that was born out of the Heroes for Hire yeah. uh, trade. Yeah. So. I, I anyway, just hope so, that they're really successful with yeah. this, because this is a whole other stream and a whole other mythology to yeah. mine now. Yeah. Uh, anyway, we're going to run over to television real quick. We're actually going to talk about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which we tried to do every single episode, but always run out of well, time. Well, this was a really good but episode. This, this last week was an amazing episode. And, by the way, before we get into that, uh, just yesterday they released an interview with um, the executive producers Jed Whedon and Marissa Tancheron. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think I'm saying that correctly. Yeah. And uh, the, one of the stars of the show, Ruth Nega, who plays the, the girl in the flower dress, mm -hmm. uh, Reyna. And uh, they confirmed 100% that the blue alien uh, that gave up the G, uh, GH325 uh, that saves Coulson and Sky is, in fact, a Kree. Is a Kree. It's a Kree. Mm. It is a Kree alien. It is a Kree. We have confirmation, everybody. How cool is it the first time they showed that on the show? Oh, my was God, dude. Like, ah! that's, that's when I was like... All right, now now I'm starting well, to like the show. Something. The problem with now the show is something. it should be 12 episodes a year. Like the 23 yeah. episode yeah. season, it just dilutes everything so yeah. much. Like all the best shows are like 12, 12 episodes. 13, yeah. Yeah. Look at how the BBC does it. You know, yeah, like, exactly. there's a good story in here. You just have to yeah. Yeah. muck through yeah. a lot of so stuff. It, it is a Cree, which leads me to believe that they are looking for the the lost inhuman city of Adelan because the Cree created the uh, the inhuman race. Well, I mean, yeah, they're they're looking that's what they established humans. on Tuesday. They're looking yeah. for the city. They found They're looking the, for they, a city. They, they just haven't named it yet. I know, but they But it's Adelaide. It's the inhumans, man. I don't know. It is. I thought so, but I don't, you don't think so. Well, you're what do you waiting think it is? for Well, the, the thing is this, like I, I thought with the writing that looked very Inhumans esque. Like yeah. I was yeah. thinking of like uh, the the Romita series that was a couple of years yeah. ago, where they had like you but know, yeah. and it looked very. But but I don't know that they're showing it. It's coming so soon. Like I just find it. It seems too soon. But the writing even it matches soon, up yeah. on um, Ronan the Accuser's weapon. Like yeah. th there's a screenshot that I found on the internet where it was it, it matches. And I you know they said that the the um the one girl I'm blanking on her name Sky? not Sky from last week the Asian girl. Um, oh, they didn't. They, I don't think they ever said her name. No, yeah, okay, but but the one that they were experimenting yeah. on, yeah. Oh, and and she's yeah. like, you know, she, she's was, the key to the map. And that I, was great. Yeah, it was that, a good episode. If you that didn't whole see stinger it, at the mm -hmm. end, that whole connection, it was great. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was really Hon good. honestly, if you can if you can watch the last like six episodes of season one and then catch up right yeah. now, Shield has gotten. It's gotten good. As soon as Winter good. Soldier came out, I thought it was so bold of them yeah. to have such a mm -hmm. related episode the yeah. day, the, the Tuesday after that yeah. movie came out. So good. Is it anybody who didn't watch it? Tough. Tough. Yeah. Spoilers? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Whatever. Uh, so anyway, so that's, uh, give us your opinions on the Inhumans. Uh, we'd love to hear that. 
uh, but uh, now we've got uh, one last thing. Our Marvel fans last week, we asked, our question of the week was, uh, uh, it, give us a name and a recipe for an Avengers-themed drink. Uh, we had a few people come in uh, with uh, a few suggestions. We're going to vote on it right now. There are yes. no prizes except you get bragging rights. We'll yeah. have a prize very soon. Uh, ben Duff suggested the Hulk Smash, which is three pints of pure vodka colored green. Oh. Pints. Three pints. Uh, Steve Zizou uh, suggested the Scarlet Witch, which is one ounce of mushrooms boiled with four tea bags. Uh, add a half gallon of water and a cup of sugar. That's all. It will change your reality as you know it. <laughs> That's what he says. Half gallon of water. Half yeah. gallon of water. How many mushrooms in there? Just one ounce. One ounce. One ounce. Is that not yeah. enough? Um, I mean, I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't <laughs> do, do you have I any? Even, no? no? Uh, so Mike Hodges threw out puny god. Uh, one third tequila, one third vodka, one third Midori with a splash of red grenadine. Yeah. Served as a double shot. So that's the puny god. Uh, Dane Owen suggested the Tony Stark, which is just water. It's just water because he's on the wagon. Not on current comics. Uh, no, right? The no. Superior Iron Man? Uh -uh. Yeah. Uh, Michael Gladue suggested uh, the Deadpool. Straight shot of grain alcohol with a drop of red dye. <sighs> Mm -hmm. That's or, it. Or just like 140 proof anything. Yeah, 140 proof mm -hmm. anything, right? Uh, and then uh, Justin Reed Patterson, the Quicksilver, uh, back to back shots of clear rum and tequila, but super fast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like super fast. Oof. All right, Oof. so those, that's what we've got. Yeah. We've got the, the Quicksilver, oh. the Deadpool, the Tony Stark, which is just water, the Puny God, the Scarlet Witch, and the Hulk Smash. I'm what? torn between Puny God and, and Quicksilver. What was the Puny God again? Puny God is third tequila, third vodka, third Midori with a splash of red grenadine. That's Puny God. And it served as a double shot. I like I like Quicksilver and Hulk Smash. All right. So like Quicksilver Hulk, Smash, Hulk Smash, you Smash. would never survive. But there's something about <laughs> yeah. that well, that makes Hulk me Smash. laugh. Yeah. All right. So we've got uh, Quicksilver and Hulk Smash. And what were yours? Uh, Quicksilver and Puny God. Okay. What are you thinking? I like the Scarlet Witch. <laughs> I'm kind of on the Scarlet Witch, too. I'm I want to see where that goes. I want to see, I want to see how altered my reality is. Uh, what do you got? Uh, I like the Hulk Smash. I think they should call yeah. Hulk Smashed. Oh, oh yeah. that is good. That Hulk is good. Hulk Smashed. All right. So uh, well, I think the, the moral of this story is we're all going to go get drunk. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, but, but we've got to choose a winner. So, oh. uh, uh, how many for the Hulk smash? You get one vote. Oh. One vote. How many for the Hulk smash? Okay, we got two. Uh, how many for the Steve Zizu? That's the, or the, uh, oh. the Scarlet Witch. Yeah. Oh, we've got oh. three. Okay. <laughs> That's uh, it. There's no more yeah, votes. Oh, no oh more so Scarlet yeah. Witch wins. Yeah. Scarlet Witch wins. Yeah. And I quickly did the math. Half gallon is eight cups. Uh, uh, an ounce would be uh, eight eighths of one ounce. So, yeah. um, so, you know, from the recipe side, it sounds sound. It sounds good. <laughs> good, 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 good. Uh, well, we're, we're going into Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So our, our question for next week will be, uh, which uh, Marvel character, hero or villain, or just side character? It could be Aunt May, if you want to say it. Uh, which character would throw the best Thanksgiving? Oh, great! Just yeah. Marvel character across the board. Which oh, one serves right. serves so the best good. Thanksgiving? All right. Uh, so that's our question for next week. Uh, that's our show for today. Thanks for listening. Please uh, make sure to find us on Facebook, Marvel News from Marvel Fans. Like us there. Uh, follow us on Twitter at Marvel Schmoes. I'm at the Matt Key. I'm at M Placco. At Matt Cook tweeted. At Adam Gertler. Uh, also, please don't forget to subscribe and rate us on iTunes. You can find us on the YouTube, uh, YouTube.com Popcorn Talk Network or PopcornTalk.com. Uh, and that's it for the show this week, guys. Uh, keep your suggestions coming. Uh, correct anything that we said wrong. Tell us what it you want to hear. It was Shao Lao, the Undying Shao in the Lao city the of Kun. Oh. In the Kun Loon, yeah. yeah. So take that, Internet. I yeah. beat you. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, untweet. Uh, untweet. So uh, uh, everyone, uh, thanks for listening. Greg, thanks for being in here. Thanks for being in here, Adam. Thanks, Jutarvis. Jutarvis. Thanks, 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 guys. Me. All right. Love it. From producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, Christian Harloff, and the entire Popcorn Talk Network, we would like to thank you for tuning in. For questions or comments, be sure to visit popcorntalk.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of the Popcorn Talk Network. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of its owners or principals.